the Ninja Speedy rapid cooker and air fryer that I've been doing videos on for a couple of weeks now. And uh, I've had a couple of requests for the sous vide function. And that's what we're going to do tonight. I've got some uh, USDA Prime filet mignon. And I'm even going to use the submersion method just in case, you know, you don't have a vacuum sealer. Although I do, but we're going to use that tonight just to kind of help people with it in case they don't. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Let's get it started. All right, here is what we're working with, and it is USDA Prime from Sam's Club, and it's beef tenderloin filet mignon. Now, it's $20.98 a pound, and you can get choice that's only $15.98 a pound, but quite honestly, if I did the math right, it's only like $2 extra a steak to do the prime. I kind of recommend it if you're doing sous vide. You're spending a little time on it, and you know, I could go on and on. Honestly, we're going to just see how it does. I, I also recommend a, a circulator most if you're going to do it a lot. But here's their instructions. And they have uh, a couple. I'm trying to remember where I saw it. Yep, right here it is. 12 cups of room temperature water. Well, that's pretty much what I have in here. There is the 12 cup mark line. And that is room temperature water. I'll show you that right here. It is... 73 74 degrees right out of my tap i'm going to use a normal uh it is a well not normal it's a it's a freezer ziploc bag and we're going to put it in there and then i'm going to do one other trick to help hold it down i'll show you in just a second but uh i don't do any seasoning when i sous vide a lot of people do i don't but anyhow we're about to get this started really it's about not so much the steak as it is to just see how well this comes up to temp and how it, how well it maintains it. Let's get started. All right. Well, here is the bag, the uh, Ziploc uh, freezer gallon bag. And I'm using it. I don't need that big of a bag, but I want to make sure the lid stays up uh, or the, the, the zipper part stays above the, uh, the water level, obviously. Here's the steak I've chosen to use. So I'm going to put it in the bottom of the bag in the center. Now, here's the only thing, if you don't have a, a vacuum sealer, this would be, uh, and there's nothing wrong with this method, but you do have to make sure. Let me say it like this. Once you start doing what you see me doing, in fact, I'm going to turn it this way where maybe you can see it a little better. The weight of that water starts to push the air out of that bag just by uh, physics, <laughs> I guess you'd say. But you just don't want that zipper or the Ziploc opening to go in, you know, submerge. You don't want to get water in it. That's what I'm getting at. Now, I do turn mine this way. And I'm going to let it sit just a minute and I'll see what it does. All right, now you can see right now that tip right there came up, that back corner. So that means we still have air. And I'm going to tell you, when it gets warmer, that water, that air will show up even more. So you kind of want to, you know, fidget with it, try and get, you know, work it a little bit. But I'm going to show you one more trick, but you just try and get all of it out uh, as you can by using the weight of that water. Now, I've got it set this way for a reason. If you see that, I know I know when I was doing my little test a while ago that I, I had it turned the other way and that punched a hole in the top of my bag. Didn't matter. It would have probably been fine. But you can see I'm having to fidget to keep that steak down. Well, maybe right now. Right now, it will probably be all right. I'm going to pick the camera up and try and show it to you best I can. But there you go. It's in the water. It's doable. Well, it, just, <laughs> it did just come back up. But here's my point. They say do not use this in this device. Well, this might turn out to be a very handy item. We're about to find out because it is extremely hard to get this kind to not float because it's hard to get all that air out unless you have a vacuum sealer. Well, this right here, I'm going to set it right there, just like that. Now, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, there's not anything wrong with it. It's all going to whatever temp I set this thing to after, a, you know, 20 minutes, whatever, especially in the two hours I'm going to cook it because that's what I normally do is two hours, and I usually do two hours at 130. So that uh, crisper plate is now my uh, weight to hold my steak down. So I don't even think you have to close the lid. In fact, I, I know you don't. 
I'm going to turn it on to make sure you can kind of see it. I might even drop the camera at this point. And uh, you can see we're already on sous vide right there. And that's how you do that is by this. But we're going to sous vide. It's already at 130. That's default. That's what it goes to. That is my number. But you could run it up. In fact, you can go down to 120. That's as low as it'll go. But we're using 130. Uh, we're going to go three hours time. That's fine. Well, we're going to watch it. I want to make sure I'm at 130 or roughly 130 for two hours. That's what I want. Now, I'm going to close this just to show you what I mean by making sure it, that I think that helps maintain heat. So long story short, we're hitting start uh, and in a little bit. In fact, I'm going to get a timer set up. I'll show you this clock again. It's, it's 1147 and I'm going to get a timer set up right here and we're going to, uh, we're going to time it. Be back. All right. That's pretty quick. Ain't it? 1148, one minute. I got it running where uh, we got a timer running right now. So we'll know exactly how long this takes and I'll be checking temps along the way. Be back. One more thing I want to say is I put mine in and I do this with the circulator and all. I put my steak in to begin with. This may come up in a minute. I don't know, but it may come up in a minute and say add food. I do not see any reason to not add the food to begin with. But as you can see, I've already added my food. And uh, I don't know if it matters, uh, but this is how I do it. So now you know. All right, just so you'll know. And you got the time just like I do. It says add food now, and it's probably right at three minutes. Uh, let's just see what it is, but I, I got a feeling it's not 1.30, but let's see. We are 80. It's kind of like the one lid. It it just tells you to add the food, and I, I'm assuming you can see that, but it, it's 86 degrees. So we're going to be watching this one just like we kind of, if you watch my video on the, the OL701 or the one lid or the uh, the the one live wonder I call it, which I do love, but anyhow, it, it did the same thing. So now you know. Okay, so we're going to do a temp check at the 15 minute mark. Now, I don't know why they tell you to add the food after say three or four minutes, because it's not at temp. And I don't start the counting of my food, and I don't suggest you do either. That you know, until it's at the temp you want, which mine is set for 130, but you know, I'll take 128, maybe 127. I've Ain't many of them at that temp. But right now, we're going to see what it is at roughly the 15-minute mark. And it is, and I'll get my arm out of the way, it is 108, 109. And I come to this side, it's 108. And uh, that's what it is. Now, I'm going to press that down just a little bit because I can, and I may have shortchanged that bag a little bit by closing that lid on it. But I, I, And you can do the same thing I'm doing. I'm just going to push it back, and uh, I'll just show you because I'm doing all that. It, it wasn't up bad. It, it certainly wasn't out of the water. But I'm going to get my bag kind of like that, and I'm going to do that. Again, I usually use a vacuum sealer, and uh, that does do considerably better. But that's not what this is about. It's about the temps of this machine. So I'll come back when we're a lot closer to the 130 mark. All right, I've been watching the temp, y'all, for the whole hour. It said, it said add the food an hour and four minutes ago because it's at 156, counting down from three hours. It should be at 130. Well, in my opinion, it should have been at 130 before it ever started counting down, but you can see it's 124, and uh, you saw what it was to begin with, 80-something. And it's been somewhere between there the whole time uh this been running so i guess this is something i'd say is another reason to have a thermometer i i just love them i think they're great i think they'll 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 help you in a lot of ways but we're gonna let this go i'm gonna let it go till it hits somewhere around i'm gonna say one i'll go with 127 once it hits 127 I'm going to uh, see how much time's left, and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> but my, I guess my point is, you know, I don't know that I would, uh, if you're going to use this for sous vide, you're going to need a thermometer, and you're going to need to watch your water temp. Same thing with the one lid, in my opinion, but not, not trying to 
be a downer. Just just telling my honest opinion. And there it is. All right. So I've decided that, you know, we're at, well, there's an hour and 43 minutes left. You know, that's that's not, that's good enough time for me for the thickness of the steak I have. And we are at 125, 126. Well, that's, that's rare. That's a little past rare. I think rare is like 120. And uh, my favorite number, honestly, is 128. I just usually go with the 130 because it's an even number and easy to remember. So what we're going to do, we're going to let this finish at the 140, uh, an hour and 43 minutes, and, and we'll check it along the way to see if it ever gets to actually 130, which is the temp it's set at. But uh, we're going to pull it out at, when that clock ends. <laughs> and uh, we're going to sear it in here too, by the way. I, you know, I got to think that out a little bit. We got to get it out and dry the bottom off, get the steak dried off, hit it with some avocado and sear it. But I'll see y'all in a minute. Okay, so just because we're at the one hour left mark, or pretty pretty close to one hour left, 54 minutes, let's see what we are. And I'll move my arm again, hopefully. We are... 129 so not bad 130 i just saw 130 not sure you can for my arm but 130 all the way around hey i'm happy uh that means i got a whole hour at the temp i set it at which i would have been good at 128 but we set it at 130 so it's supposed to be 130 but now you know okay we're about to see what what it does when it's over and There you go. The classic uh, noise that uh, Ninja makes. Let me make sure everything looks good. We're going to pull this steak out of here just like that. And I'll show you what it looks like. It's just water, so I can let it drip on the floor. And everything looks good. Now what we're going to do is cover it to kind of keep it warm. I'm not even going to take it out of there because I'm about to get the water out of there. And we're going to uh, uh, do my searing inside or in this device. All right, that was that's how long that took. Nearly, nearly done. <laughs> what we're going to do now is pull the steak out of here. I'm going to leave these juices in here because, it, it, again, same thing I said at the when I was using doing the same thing on the OL701 or the uh, One Lid Wonder. You don't really need. Uh, uh, that you or you do if you want to make a sauce, but we're not doing that. I, I guess I should say it that way. We're not using it, and we're going to dry this steak off. And I'm going to kind of leave it right there, and I'm going to put that towel back on it. I don't know why I put it over here. I'm having to reach across my camera, but we're going to kind of keep that warm. And then we're going to spray a little avocado oil right here. And I probably should would do a little bit better if I just uh poured it in there but i didn't have it handy <laughs> didn't think about it beforehand either so i am going to go to uh sear saute it's on high five we're gonna hit start and uh i'm gonna get things going and when that heats up we're gonna sear that steak Back. Okay, so remember, I've sprayed the bottom of that, and I've sprayed the steak. We're right at five minutes, and we have right at, well, close to 400 degrees. We're three, 380. I saw 380, so we're about to drop this filet, and here it comes. And it'll only take a minute. I'm going to move it around with my hand, because <laughs> I can. And... Uh, we're not going to leave it long. Just want to get that oil moved around a little bit because there's, you know, it kind of, it has a, a little bit of a con or a opposite concave. I guess you say a, a mound in the bottom and the oil kind of runs to the side. So you have to kind of chase it around a little bit, but you could do that, you know, with this, you know, just this is how I do it. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to leave the camera running where it'll be kind of real time, but I don't think it's going to matter much. Uh, it's not going to take long. In fact, let's see what it looks like already. I'm going to do it with my fingers, and it is hot. <laughs> but you can see, there you go. That's what it looks like. And that's seared up pretty good. That'll do. I will take that right there. And uh, I promise you, this is going to be the 
it's tender. It's a, it was tender if you cooked it on a grill, no doubt. But if you cook it like this right here, it is a, not like anything you've ever had. If you've never had, that's if you've never had sous vide uh, prime uh, or, or a filet mignon, especially USDA prime. But you know that part you might could do away with. I just don't see it. Like I said, two dollars a steak is what I said in the beginning. Is it's worth it's worth that. And uh, skate it around a little bit. And I don't even want to cook it any further. I just kind of want to get that uh, the malliard or the, the searing going on. And uh, that's all this is about. And this seems to be doing it really well. Now, if you if you had cast iron, you know, I mean, set up somewhere and you wanted to use it, you could, but you can see what this did. And we're at, uh, well, seven minutes and 10 seconds and we've put this in at five. So that's uh, two minutes. I, I ain't got to tell you. Y'all know this. Most people... That I, most of my subscribers got enough sense to know what's going on when they see it. And uh, we're going to let this rest right now. In fact, I'm going to move that. And we're going to put it right here. Now I'm about to cut it up. We're going to see what it looks like. I got to cut that off. I'm going to let that rest just a minute. I'll be back. Okay, so I kind of moved the camera around. We're going to just take it cut it up right here then i gotta make some pictures like always but let's just make some cuts and uh this is what sous vide does and i'm promising you 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 may have had some really good steaks and i'm not i'm not saying you haven't but uh i don't think you'll uh come close to this at home and most of your buddies will be impressed and that's my true opinion now i gotta stop right here and get some uh some of those pictures i have to get but you can see it and i mean i can take that right there and tell you well you know something you don't need somebody to tell you that <laughs> that's excellent i gotta get all this aligned where i can get my jelly 007 in there and all that stuff and get a good picture so i'll be back to brag on it in just a second all right 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 there is a sous vide USDA Prime <laughs> uh, filet mignon. And that is what it does. You'll not, you'll not beat it with any other steak, I don't think. I don't think you'll beat it in any restaurant. It's absolutely uh, unbeatable. I'll leave it at that. Hey, I love y'all. Come back to see me. Now, I, I'm I'm not crazy about what the temps do, but if you use a thermometer, you can track them and it works. But I do kind of recommend a, a circulator if you're going to do it a bunch. And even then, I want a thermometer. I would. I would want one. I use them. So, love y'all. Come back to see me. Bye.